Um, I'd like to introduce our graduate students. They're important people to know. Um, and we're lucky we've got a few around that can help out with various things. So we'll start with Lydia. Lydia, you're here, right? I think I saw you. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Lydia, where are you from? I am from Pleasantdale, Nebraska. Well, that's a long ways away. About a thousand miles. <laughs> so this is year two for Lydia. She's going to be working with the Trumpet Student Studio primarily. Uh, she'll also be uh, helping out with recital seminars. So for those of you who are, are taking that, um, She's your go-to person for grading and and uh, all that stuff. So welcome, Lydia. It's good to have you back. Thank you. Um, our other second-year graduate student is Kristen Collins. Kristen, say hi and tell us where you're from. Hello. Um, I'm from Syracuse, New York, so also pretty far away. Yeah, that's pretty far away. So it's great to have you back. Glad you're here. Uh, Kristen will be working with the Trombone and Low Brass Studio and um, she also does stuff with recital seminar and orchestra. Can't remember. A few things. <laughs> um, I'm around. Yeah, that's good. Um, so those, both Kristen and Lydia are GAs, graduate assistants, and so they help out with some of the the tasks uh, in the studios, and they're good people to ask questions of. I'm also excited to uh, introduce to everybody, we've got two grad students that are just starting the semester in trombone. Uh, we'll start with Brandon. Brandon, why don't you tell us uh, who you are, where you're from? Hello, I'm uh, Brandon. I'm from uh, the Lafayette area, so. Welcome. It's back home. <laughs> Brandon just finished his uh, undergrad degree at Southeastern and uh, Decided that he'd uh, he'd come north a little bit, <laughs> um, and then we've also got Todd. Todd Warren's here. Uh, Todd, why don't you tell us hello and tell us where you're from? Hello. Um, as Dr. Yates said, my name is Todd Warren. Um, I did my undergrad uh, at Southwestern Oklahoma State University, which is in Weatherford, Oklahoma. Um, so it was quite a long trip down here, but I am excited. Great to have you. Glad you're here. Glad you made it down from Oklahoma. So um, if it's okay, I was going to go over the academic calendar real quick. Is that cool with everybody? Okay. All right. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, my session is timed out. Are you serious? No, I'm fine. <laughs> uh, so this is the university uh, academic calendar, and you can find this at registrar.louisiana.edu. And uh, there's some very important dates on this that are that are kind of important for everybody to just be aware of. Um, so first of all, I just want to point out that they're actually missing one of the most important dates on this calendar, I think. So classes started on the 17th, and the last day to add a class or change credits on a lesson is today um, by, by using the online registration site. So I'll be talking about that with low brass, but please make sure that you have the correct lesson credits already um, for your lessons. Most of us need two credits uh, for our major to get an hour lesson. Um, hey, that change. It's, ne it's next Thursday now. There's an email this morning from uh, Dwayne K. Bowie. Awesome. That's even better yeah. the time. But still, everybody should get their lesson credits figured out now. <laughs> yeah, uh, let, let me say something here. Yep. Uh, if, if your music education, the default setting is one credit, you have to take a two credit lesson to get an hour's time and a half hour is not enough. So you got to make sure you got room in your schedule for two credits. Music Ed, it's especially important. Thanks. Yep. Absolutely. We need that hour. Um, so the last day to drop um, is 27th. That's pretty key. Um, and then the last day to apply for candidacy, grad students, this would be Lydia and... Um, and Kristen is September 4th. And you, I'm sure you're talking to uh, Dr. Roche Wallace about that. Um, I'd like to point out that although we have a strange schedule this semester, we do have Labor Day off, which is very exciting. So we have a, we have a day off coming up 
and I think we all probably need it. Uh, Dr. Morton, do you have any words of wisdom for what to do on a day off? Have recreation. Ah, recreation. Thank you. Um, so there's a bunch of other dates on here. Not all of them actually apply to most of us, um, but I do want to point out a couple things. Advising will be starting on October 12th, and for most of us, we'll be talking about that recital seminar and getting you prepared for that. Um, but have that date in mind so that you can be ready to meet with your advisor and actually have some ideas about what you're going to do next semester. Um, and certainly have any questions ready to go for them when you get to actually meet with them. Um, the last date to drop with a grade of W is October 29th. And a W is better than failing a course. I'll say that again. A W is better than failing a course or getting a D. So... If you think you, you're in a course that maybe you're not going to get a great grade in, um, make sure you consider withdrawing. And that's something that your advisor can also help you with. Um, let's see. There's a bunch of stuff about dissertations here. And then the last day of classes is November 20th. So that is the Friday before Thanksgiving. And then finals will be the 21st. Uh, whoops. Oh, I see what they did. Uh, the finals will be the 21st and then the 23rd through the 25th. And um, we have not figured out exactly when juries will be yet, but we'll be working that out and getting that information to you. Um, because we're on kind of a cramped final schedule, we may have to change a few of our normal things. So please be aware that some of that may change. November 25th is the end of the semester. So it's ending very early and hopefully we'll get to actually be in person for that. Um, and then the fall commencement exercises are on December 8th, and um, I've got at least one that's graduating this fall. So that's exciting. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, does anybody have anything that they want to add about the calendar? Goody. Okay. That was my main goal for um, this meeting, Dr. Morton or Dr. Rush Wallace. Well, I think that uh, as we start the, the, this virus semester, uh, I think there's a couple things to kind of take away from this. Uh, number one is I know I am thankful that I can be here and do what I'm doing and that you all can continue your studies. And whether it's online or in person, uh, we're going to work through this. And we're working towards everybody's master plan and getting everybody into their uh, graduation mode, into professional thinking, into working towards your degree. And I, for one, am really glad that I can do this face to face with all the precautions that we're going to take. Uh, bags over the bells, social distancing, not many people playing instruments in a room, all these things we're going to really work towards because uh, I don't want anybody to get sick, and I don't want to either. But I think, for me, uh, the more I can do face-to-face, -face, the better I'll feel. But regardless of that, I think there's going to be a spike. There's got to be. Uh, there's going to be some cases on campus, and then we'll just have to see what happens. Um, I think a lot of us really feel like it's inevitable that we're going to go out and be totally online at some point. And I think that we should all be preparing for that scenario um, if it doesn't happen, that'll be awesome, but I think we really have to prepare for that. And one of the things I really found uh, the last spring was that if you have to do everything on your own at your house, it becomes really difficult. And a lot of times it really becomes down to time management. You know, you get up and you think, well, I've got these things to do today, but I don't really have any structure. I don't have to go to class at a certain time. I don't have to get dressed to leave the house even, right? So you lay around in your jammies all day, and then it's 10 o'clock at night, and you realize you really haven't done anything. So I would be thinking about how you deal with time management, what's your motivation. You know, my, my experience is, is if you get up and do your work first, then you can have recreation, whatever that is to you, and you'll feel good about it, okay? And you get to, the, you get to where you're managing the, the workload, and that's the problem, especially those of you that are new to college. It's, it's all about figuring out how to do what you need to do today and not worry so much about everything else, but keeping ahead of this kind of tidal wave 
that that can land on your head right so it's you know it's a matter of doing what you need to do every single day do a little bit of each thing keep ahead of the keep ahead of the game right and then you'll feel really successful whether we're online or whether we're in face to face or whether we're keeping this hybrid thing going it's i think it's really really important to start thinking about how you're going to manage your time to be successful this semester. And I know that me and Dr. Yates and Dr. Roach Wallace and Alan Carpenter, we're all here to help you. It's our job to set you up to succeed. That's what we're trying to do, whether it's online or whether it's face-to-face. -face. We want you to meet your musical goals. We want you to graduate. We want you to go out and be successful. And that's exactly what the goal is. And, you know, we can't do the work for you, but we're going to make every effort to have you succeed within the guidelines of our curriculum. And I think it's just, uh, I think there's a lot of doom and gloom out there. It's really easy to, to be angry about stuff. I know that I, <laughs> I got an email from the Acadiana Symphony I wasn't too happy about yesterday. You know, so it's just we're all dealing with a lot of things, but I think the bottom line is we have to be thankful that we're here and we're doing the things that we love to do and we're moving forward towards our professional goals. So I think we can have a great semester no matter what the format ends to be. Thanks. Good words. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Roche Wallace, do you have anything that you'd like to say or uh, communicate with the, the brass area on? I do. I know that practicing has become challenging in this building because it's not safe yet to practice in those small practice rooms. Um, I invite you all to be creative in locate practice space. If you need help figuring out where to practice, come and ask a major professor. Trust me, it makes us very happy when you come and you say, I would like to practice. Can you please help me find a place to practice? Um, in the Horn Studio, we're scheduling times and figuring that out. But in the larger studios, that might not be possible. Once we get past this weather coming through on Monday and Tuesday, I want to invite you to take a music stand and go out under the, underneath some of the shade trees and get some practicing done in the beautiful outdoors. If you need a place to practice and it's not good weather outside, come and ask your major professor, say, hey, I really have time to practice right now and there's nowhere for me to practice. And trust me, we will help you because we want you all to practice. Amen. Agreed <laughs> to practice. You're welcome to come practice in my carport. You know, it doesn't necessarily work for other instruments, but I play the trumpet in my car regularly and I get in the back seat and I push the front seat as far forward as I can. And when it's hot, I have an electric fan that blows on me. All right. And you think, well, it's going to be super loud in there, but the car is designed to keep the road noise out. And so it actually is a very, very dead space. And so it doesn't hurt your ears. Right? I can sit up with good posture. I know it doesn't work for the trombone or the tuba, but the trumpet players, you know, listen, where there's a will, there's a way. You can be creative and find a place. And I'm going to talk with the trumpets, but I, I have an extra key to my studio. You guys can practice in here when you want. So we're, we're going to talk about that. But yes, it's a very good point that you have to be creative. And especially if, if we get locked down and you're in a domicile that you're going to bother people, then you really need to figure something out playing with mutes or working out a time of the day when you can practice or finding, you know, in your backyard somewhere. I mean, you just got to have to be creative about it. Good point. And we will help you. We'll do whatever we can to help you. Um, trombones, youths, and tubas, I highly recommend getting some practice mutes. Um, that helps a lot. Um, so we'll be talking about that as well. I guess the only other thing I'd like to add at this point is that uh, you should have got all gotten emails. Uh, I assume my colleagues have emailed out the, the scans, the music for the Echelon Brass Quintet audition, which is coming up. So uh, I encourage all of you to consider this audition. Playing in a brass quintet, playing chamber music is one of the most um, artistically satisfying things that you can do as a musician, as a brass player. And our our 100% intent right now is to have a normal semester uh, with that group. 
It pays $800 a semester, so $1,600 for the year. The uh, schedule is absolutely flexible. You may think, well, I don't, can't add another rehearsal, but the, the rehearsals are scheduled around uh, your individual schedules for the five people that are in there. And uh, we'll have a coaching every week, which this semester will be with me. And there's gigs to do, recitals to do, and it's just a lot of fun. I would really encourage that everybody take a look at that music and think about auditioning next Thursday in the Blue Room at 8 a.m. And if you think, well, I've got a class conflict, I can't do it, then talk to me or your major professor and say, listen, I need another time. Guess what? We'll work out another time for you to audition. It's not that big of a deal. So Echelon Brass Quintet. Next Thursday, 8 a.m., Blue Room. You should all have the music. If you don't, I can email it to you again. I just really encourage everybody to take that audition. Yep, absolutely. Agreed. Thanks. Um, I'd like to take a brass area photo on Zoom, but does anybody else have anything else that they'd like to cover before we, we part ways? Um, do you have any th information about, they said something about like when we do practice rooms that would have to like schedule them. Do you know anything about how that's going to work yet? We really don't. There is a plan in place to create a, a schedule, but um, all that information will come out as soon as it's actually ready. So we, we will make sure that you have that information. So I'm going to go ahead and um, take a couple screenshots here. If you, uh, if you're not on camera right now and you feel like your camera ready, I'd love to do you. So I'm going to do a couple pages at a time here. Um, you know, if you have a mask covering your face, try to smile with your eyes. <laughs> All right, here we go. Page one, three, two, one. Looking good. Page two, I've got three, two, one. And then page three. Oh, nope, I lost page three. We're good. Okay. Um, so I think we're set to break out now. Um, so I guess, Dr. Morton, you have, a, you have a separate class meeting? Yeah, I have a separate link for the trumpets they should have. Okay. So everybody who doesn't want to stay in the low brass studio for the rest of this class can take off. And we'll see you all soon next week. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks. Be safe. So trombone studio. Euphonium Studio, Tuba Studio. Yes, yo. hey, everybody. Uh, nice to have you here. We're going to go over a few details here. Um, first of all, uh, your week was just a little more wild than you wanted it to be. Fix it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Yates, you're cutting out right now as uh, Dr. Cat figures out her Zoom. Oh. Thanks. Let me just boot her out. Where is she? She's she's out now. Her name's still there, but it's she's gone. She's not interrupting anymore. Okay, cool. So I'll try again. If your week was a little more hectic than you wanted it to be, give me a thumbs up. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, so I think for most of us, this week was a lot, and um, that's unusual for those of us, especially who are returning. Usually it's our first years that are dealing with the most junk in a given first week. So um, I think what's really important at this point is, yes, we need to get some stuff figured out, and we need to get rolling with this semester, but we also are going to have to take some time for some self-care and making sure that we're really taking care of ourselves because otherwise we are going to burn right out. Um, my feeling at this point is that we will probably not be doing anything in person soon. Um, I just don't see how this is really going to work much longer. So um, it's not that I don't want to be in person or I don't want to continue with hybrid flex, but that's, that's just the, the, the case is we, we're in a hot spot and it's not getting cooler. So um, kind of have your, your plan ready to go for what that's really gonna be like. For those of you who are living in the dorms, as you recall last spring when you were living in the dorms, um, the, uh, the school didn't boot you out of the dorms, but they highly recommended that you leave. Um, and so that could happen again. They could kind of try to push you out. Um, they may incentivize it with, um, with refunds and stuff, I don't know. I'm not saying they will. 
um, but but they could. And if that's the case, and you take off and go home, you you got to be talking to your family about what your needs are and how those are going to fit in with the family needs um, in terms of being a student. It's really difficult to practice at home. Um, I live in a very small house. I live in a house that's uh, exactly 1,000 square feet, okay? And uh, I live there with my cat and my lovely wife, Katie. And Katie is very um, nice to me about playing the trombone. Very nice. But not everybody in, in uh, who they live with is so nice about our instruments playing for four, five, six, seven hours a day. Um, so you need to be thinking about what that means for you and what you're going to have to do if you do get forced home. And I think it's better to be preemptive at this point than to, uh, to not be. So that's just one thing that's been on my mind. I've got kind of a long list of things I want to go over and Kristen has a list of things and then, um, we'll be sure that we actually part ways on a positive note today. <laughs> like Dr. Morton said, I don't want everything to be super doom and gloom all the time. So first of all, I already introduced our graduate students for this semester. I'm really excited. We've got a, a group of three students that are going to do a great job. And like I've mentioned before, these people are going to do a really good job of working with all of you. Um, so, you know, if you want to meet them individually or, or get to know them, I think that's a great idea. Feel free to reach out to Brandon, Todd, obviously Kristen, and um, get to know them. And I think... Uh, you know, it's going to take a little bit more effort on your part as students and on their part as grad students to kind of have that individualized uh, relationship this semester. It's not going to just happen in the hallway or an ensemble. So, um, it, you know, feel free to, to take that step and get to know people. Um, I'd like to introduce a few of our first years. Uh, let's see, who do I have on my first page here? I've got Ty. Hey, Ty, you want to just tell us hi and tell us where you're from? Hi, I'm from uh, Thibodeau, Louisiana. And what are you studying, Ty? I'm, um, I'm a music performance major. Excellent. Glad to have you. Thanks for being here. Tony, I got you here. Uh, tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you're studying. Uh, I'm Tony Gattuso. Uh, I am from East Texas, actually. And uh, I'm studying music. Uh, right now, I'm listed as performance. It's going to end up as performance or composition. So. Very cool. Really, really glad to have you here. Welcome. And let's see. I thought I saw Julian somewhere. Yeah, there you are, Julian. You want to say hey? Hi. Yeah, I'm, I'm washing dishes right now. I'm sorry. Oh, washing dishes during studio class. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, be nice. It's all good. I'm going to be washing dishes during all your recitals. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> it's good to have you, Julian. We're, we're really glad that you're here. Um, let's see. Who else do I got here? Anyone? I guess it's Are you it. going to wash dishes during my barrier today? Yeah, definitely. Why not? Um, so it's good to have everybody here. And for those of you who are returning, I'm very glad to have you back obviously. Um, we're going to go over a couple other things that are a little bit more business-like now. Um, first of all, I'm going to go to this. Um, so studio shirts. You'll notice that a bunch of people are wearing shirts that have this nice little logo on it. I designed it myself. No, I didn't. Um, so th these are our studio shirts. Uh, man, Kevin and Jude, you got to stop laughing. You're distracting me like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, get serious. <laughs> um, these studio shirts are what we wear to studio class most weeks. It's not a requirement, but we like it. Um, we also wear them when we do performing uh, performances. Um, and, uh, you know, just in general to intimidate other people. Uh, I wore my studio shirt to uh, the grocery store the other night, and uh, I'm sure I scared a lot of people. So um, anyway, I've got a couple people that still need to pick one up from me, uh, Julian and Tony. So. Um, Actually, and, and Tony, I've got a cutaway for you as well. So, oh, that's I'll be right. The, yeah, I'll be in the office today. Um, I've got to do some juries at eleven, but then I'll be in the office from about eleven forty-five until twelve thirty. If that overlaps, okay for you. You can pick stuff up for me. 
or um, on Tuesday, I'll be in the office in the morning. So you can grab stuff from me then. Sound doable? Cool. Right. Yeah, we have, me and Julian have a marching band today. So that lines up perfect, actually. Perfect. Yeah. So just stop by at like noon when you're, when you're coming through. Um, and uh, if I'm not in the office <laughs> right away, I will be there as quick as I can. All right. Thanks. Um, my other thing here. Uh, lessons. I need everybody to check their lessons credits. Um, right now, I've got a couple of people that need to get things uh, updated here. Uh, let's see here. Um, and I emailed out about this this morning, but I'm going to pick on, hey, Garrett, I don't have you registered for any lessons. Are you, are you <laughs> able to register for lessons? I need to get a, a override. Oh, uh, what? Uh, okay. So you need the College of the Arts override? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to email you the form. There's an online form that you can fill out for that. If you can get that done before noon today, that would save us both some work. Thanks. Um, let's see. Tony, we got to get you to two credits on lessons. I sent some instructions on that. Does that make sense? Okay. If, if it doesn't make sense, Kevin Hilbin, who's also in this call. Hey, Kevin, wave. Yeah, man, I'm going to pick on you, Kevin. Kevin can help you because he figured it out. Um, hey, Jude, I need you at two credits too. So so your buddy there, Kevin, can help you. I already, I, I changed it this morning. I had changed it like a week ago, but uh, I, it didn't submit. Like I didn't press the submit button, so it's, it's good. Okay, cool. Thank you. I yeah. appreciate it. Just got to make sure I get you all on that. Okay, chamber ensembles. Uh, Professor Carpenter and I are going to be um, putting together some chamber ensembles next week. It's going to take us a little bit of time to get all this worked out. Right now, for trombones, I have interested in chamber music. Uh, Alex Boone, Hunter Wallace, Kevin Hilbin, Tony Catuso, Brandon McGrew. Um, I guess that's it for trombones. Is anybody else that's a trombone player interested in chamber music this semester? Um, just go ahead. Looks and like Garrett is. What's that? It looks like Garrett is. Oh, Garrett is? Cool. Thank you. Garrett, um, I'm going to put you on the list and I'll get information out to you. Anybody other than Garrett that's a trombone player interested in chamber music? Moose, Moose is rocking. Joey's crying. Okay, guys. All right. We'll miss you. It's cool. It's cool. All right. So for youths, uh, right now I've got Hunter interested in chamber music. Anybody else that's a euphonium player interested in chamber music? Uh, yes, for tubal euphonium. Oh, you okay? Either. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Whatever I'm needed on, or both. I think I think Holden might be too. I don't. I just don't think he reads his emails. So I'm gonna talk to him today when I see him at band. Yeah, yeah we're home. I'm interested. Like in the studio still? Like. Uh, I heard a couple of people talk at once. I think Alex talked. Alex, would you say? I said that I was interested. I signed up for it, like the class. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. You're so quiet. Are you? Um, are you being secretive today? A little bit. Okay. Well, welcome. Uh, Pierce, are you interested? Um, yes. Do I have to sign up for the class to do it? Because you know me, I take too many classes. <laughs> you take too many classes, I can be understanding, but I, I would prefer that you, uh, well, for one thing, it's good for your, for your uh, transcript to show um, you what you do. Just because I don't know if I'll be at 19 or 20 hours, and, you know, everyone gets pouty over overrides like that. If you end up doing Echelon, I'd rather you, you register for Echelon with Dr. Morton, and then you can just be in a 2 youth ensemble too, okay? Okay, because I think I'm registered for uh, Echelon right now, just to, you know, just to fill out the schedule for a moment, so. Sure, okay, sounds good. Uh, Ethan, are you interested in doing a quartet this semester? No? Okay. Um, Ty, would you like to play tuba in a tuba youth quartet? Yes. Awesome. I'm going to put you down. Um, Julian, would you like to play in a 2B quartet this semester? Yes. Also, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and Julian, if you want to pick up a studio shirt, oh, I guess I already talked about that. Never mind. I'm, I'm losing my marbles here. Sorry, everybody. Um, let's see. Who else do I got here? Actually, I'm going to be picking up his shirt for him, Julian. We're, we're sweet mates, and he's got a class then. Cool. So, um, you know, if you can get if you can get me twenty five bucks for it now, that's great. If if I need it later, 
that's also fine. But now is better. <laughs> uh, oh, Kevin and Jude, looking good. Let's see. Who am I missing? Who am I missing? Marty, I have you on my list, right? I sure do. We're good. Cool. Thanks. Uh, did I miss anybody? Is anybody else interested in chamber music or getting more information about what chamber music is? Going once, going twice. I have a question oh. about lessons, actually. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Uh, would it be possible for me to take um, either three or four credit hours so I don't have to stay an extra semester just to take a lesson? Yes. Um, we really, yeah, you could take, you could, um, yeah, we'd have to double up like we did this. So we'd have to do two, uh, two levels at a time. I've been so, doing that for two years now. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Why don't, why don't you talk to um, Professor Carpenter about that? And what I would do is just go ahead and you'll only be able to register for three credits in uh, 315. So just up it to three today if you can, because then we don't have to do it through the registrar. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Okay. Um, recitals. I've got um, Trevor Musa. You've got a senior recital this semester. Joey, you've got a senior recital this semester. I actually, Joey, I don't think I've got you registered for that recital. Can you can you find my section and just check it? It's. I thought I had you, and then I didn't see you this morning, but. Anyway, that's one thing. Um, man, I've got another recital this semester, don't I? Yeah, Ethan, I've got a senior recital. Um, have you registered for senior recital? No, I don't know how to do that. Okay. Um, Musa, remind me, is it two credits of 315 and then one credit of recital, senior recital? Correct. So you've got your two credits of euphonium lessons, and then you'll just need to add a recital. And I bet good money Carpenter doesn't actually have a section open for that. So I'm just going to have you uh, uh, register for my section. So okay. um, I can tell you quickly what that, um, hey, come on in. I can tell you what that section number is, I think. Um, Senior recital, MUS 490, and my section is 015. Doable. Who else do I have that's given a senior recital this semester? I can just talk to Ethan. Um, Pierce, are you registered? No, we're pushing you back. Yeah, because the pianist issue. Right, and then Alex, we're... Excuses junior recital cool so uh, I've got professor carpenter here with me um, I'm just gonna introduce him real quick and put him on the screen I'm just gonna flip this around for you what no you're fine so you showing okay say hey hi that's <laughs> boy for those of you who don't know, this is Professor Carpenter, and he teaches two euphonium here. And he's um, just finishing his um, doctoral degree at Louisiana State University. I hear it's an okay uh, institution. Over there in Hammond. Over there in Hammond. Oh, yeah, right. Um, and uh, anyway, so I think I'd like everybody to unmute themselves real quick and clap and congratulate Professor Carpenter. He's actually. Let's go. Yay. And now you can all be muted. Um, so oh. <laughs> get out of here. So, uh, Professor Carpenter is uh, finishing this degree, and ABD stands for all but dissertation which means that he is writing his document as we speak. And uh, we hope he gets it done soon so that he can have that doctor in front of his name, which means that he knows everything and no one can question anything that he says. For real. <laughs> uh, 
good, 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 good. So that's recitals. We got through all that stuff. Um, Kristen, why don't you take it for a second and just make sure that you get everybody's information for your check-ins. Okay, so two things. Um, I'm trying to get Zoom info from some of you so I can add you to the studio channels on Zoom. They're like little chat channels we use to communicate. So Todd and Ty, I sent you both contact requests. I just need you both to accept them. Um, that way I can add you to um, all the channels that we need. Then for the weekly check-ins, the Zoom ones with me, um, if Joey, Alex Boone, Brian, Holden, he's not here, Jonas, Trevor, Ty, Tony, and Julian could message me your time preferences, preferably before Sunday. I'll send you another email if I need to, but if you guys could get that stuff to me as soon as you can, that would help me out a lot. So I think that's it. So thanks, everyone. <laughs> okay, thank you, Kristen. Um, I had to put my mask on as well, Kevin and Jude, because I've got Professor Carpenter in here. Uh, so the last thing I wanted to go over today is maybe not super applicable to everybody because some of you have already done this, but you'll notice that I'm a big fan of uh, cutaway mouthpieces. And I'll be talking about this quite a bit in studio class. Um, for those of you who already have a cutaway mouthpiece, why don't you just raise your hand in the Zoom real quick? Yeah. A bunch of us have one. Um, and, you know, I find this to be a super useful device. Uh, it's a little bit like the combination between buzzing on the mouthpiece and buzzing on um, uh, a rim visualizer. And um, there's a lot of things that we can do with the cutaway, including diag diagnosing what's going on with the buzz or the embouchure or the airstream uh, and tongue placement as well with that. Um, so some of you have gotten one from me. Um, I actually have my very last one from my last order and it's gonna go out to Tony. Um, so we actually got a pretty sweet deal from the guy who owns uh, MKS Cutaway Mouthpieces. And he's actually providing uh, those to all of us for um, $41 from his shop with free shipping. So it's $1 more <laughs> than I was getting them for, but you don't have to wait for me to put in a big order. Um, so this is what they look like. And I just wanted to kind of move through some of the stuff. I, I really apologize for the tube of being so expensive. It's actually more than $40. Um, but we can talk through that if you're interested. Um, so I'm just going to kind of put one in my cart here and just show you the process for this in case you're interested. So uh, essentially, when you go to the store, all you have to do is add this to your cart. And then there's going to be when you check out, oops, I've already got it in there. Dang it. Well, cookies are stupid. Um, you'll see that I've added this coupon, Cajuns20, and that's uh, taken a, uh, a $10.40 discount off of the total price. And then you can check out from there. He's got PayPal set up and Amazon Pay and all that stuff. And um, you're actually going to get free shipping as well. Um, so if anybody's interested in that, uh, I can show you that stuff. And if you forget what the coupon code is, I can tell you again, but it's a pretty nice thing that he's doing for us, uh, helping us out here so that we're not all dropping big chunks of money on cutaways. Um, and if I have not talked about a cutaway mouthpiece with you yet, I probably will. So watch for that. Um, gosh, Kristen, am I forgetting anything? I don't think so, no. Are there any questions from the audience? Yes, I have a question. Brian. When you get in an auditorium. When do I get into the auditorium? Yeah, like when are you coming? Uh, in like 10 minutes. Okay, I need a copy for all y'all that need a copy. Because I've been stuck at my house and haven't had access to a printer. Okay. I'll copy, I'll make you a copy, and then I've got a copy for Dr. Roche Wallace and Dr. Morton, and uh, Professor Carpenter and I know them well enough that we will be fine. Yeah. Memorize. Sure? You know. So I'll, okay, I'll you. made for you here in a second, okay? Thanks. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, I have a comment okay. about 
focusing outside. So Dr. Hockepel told the, the, us in Wind Ensemble and Jazz Ensemble that anyone can practice under the tents outside. And they're big enough to where you, you could fit eight people if you're all nine feet apart. So it's a lot of people can practice under there. That's great. Thank you, Trevor. And, and a big thanks to the band department and Dr. Hockepel for getting those for us. Uh, if, if I decided to go practice outside, would I need to bring my own stand or are there stands available? Uh, the band room is probably unlocked, so you could grab a stand. It'd be best if you bring your own so you don't have to wipe it down every time. And you can probably get a cheap wire stand that might fit music, but doesn't mean it's not going to hold up against the wind, though. <laughs> right, right. Okay, thank you. Um, okay. I think I'm ready to wrap it up unless anybody else has anything. It does look like we're going to get a little bit of weather this weekend and into early next week. So we'll just deal what we deal. I guess you guys are probably better at than, than I am. I will say that my folks place recently uh, sustained damage from 100 mile an hour uh, direct winds uh, for over an hour. And uh, that looks really scary. So I'd rather not ever experience a hurricane, but I probably will. <laughs> oh, just like a thunderstorm, sure. So it's great to see everybody. Um, for those of you who um, I have not seen in person yet, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, please feel free to stop by on Tuesday or Thursday mornings. Um, if I'm not teaching, uh, I'll definitely open the door and say hey in person. It's great to see you all. And before we end this real quick, I'd love to just get a photo of everyone one more time. This is my favorite thing to do. So please start your cameras up and get yourself all posed out. And uh, let's see here. Actually, I gotta, I gotta rejoin my camera. Messed up. Come on. I'm gonna be able to get everybody on one here. This is gonna be awesome. Hunter, where'd you go? Hunter. He's Madden. Where'd Jonas go? Jonas has to come back. His camera on his computer doesn't work, or he doesn't have one. Okay. He's right there. Hey, Garrett, tell me about that hat real quick. Woo. It's a cool little hat. It is. It is a cool little hat. All right. Here we go. Studio oh. photo. First studio class of the semester. Three. Two, one. All right. Thanks, everybody. It's great to see you all. Please stay safe out there. Um, I've sent a lot of emails this week, and I promise I will send fewer next week. So stay in touch. Let me know if you've got questions, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks.